Alright boys, here we are again, and I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd be here again. I was having a chat with a viewer, William McClear3330, appreciate the back and forth brother, and he was talking about including tests with sparse line formations and other things, and believe it or not, I'm even more impressed with archery after what I tested. So I have a huge battle here. I have 43,000 gold worth of sacred knights from Marignan in the Middle Age with natural protection buff to get our protection eventually up to 30 and 31. I brought in these little super mages to pump out the spells. On this side, I brought in a couple of mages to pump out spells to make sure that we buff. Because I figured we were testing the buffed protection of the knights. We never tested buffed strength of the archers. So what I do is I have all of these guys drop strength of giant on big groups. It doesn't get all of them, but it gets most of them. And what I found in this test was that if you drop Wind Guide on your troops for the plus two precision battlefield wide, and then if you cast True Shot Warriors, the 20 plus area of effect spell on your troops, they stack. It seems like they stack because the True Shot Warriors gives you precision plus four, but only in an AoE 20. Wind Guide gives your whole battlefield plus two and halves the effect of storms. So this actually seems to make their precision. The final stat we got on this, I'll pull it up on the screen right now. Looks like it's 19 attack. When we buffed them with strength buff, and granted these aren't sacred so we can't really do anything crazy with them, but when we buffed them with strength buff and then we script horribly so our crossbowmen end in the front and die, you'll see. You'll see exactly what happens with these ones. Check this out. Look at those damage numbers. Keep in mind, all we have up front are these Black Plate Infantry, which are tanky, but they're not really doing any of the damage. They're just surviving as long as they can. These guys are protection hell-blessed, so to speak. That's the best stat we can get for these guys. The average is more like this. And look at that! So when we're looking at the aftermath, these crossbows killed 531 troops. That's pretty intense considering our buffs weren't perfect, so we only got 17 damage on some and 19 damage on others, mostly 17. And the precision was pretty good, it was 15 on most of them, 17 on a few. It seems very, 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 very effective because if you do the math on these 70 gold knights of the chalice, yes, you can get them in every province, but they're 70 gold a pop. If you're looking at these crossbows, they're 10 gold a pop, and these black plate infantry protect their line for them. They're only 10 gold a pop. The amount of money we ended up spending was 11,750 gold just in troops for Ulm and 43,610 gold just in Knights of the Chalice. So that's an insane, insane amount. And we buffed the Knights of the Chalice protection the best we could with a reasonable bless of plus five natural protection on the buff and a little reinvigoration, which made them fight a little better, but that's small ease. But it seems like you have enough tanky-ish troops to hold the line for you just to survive. These guys had seven less protection than the Knights of the Chalice when they were buffed seven and eight depending on the head or the body and so it makes quite a big difference so we're going to do some more testing and figure more out but this looks pretty dominating once you get a critical mass of crossbows it actually looks like unlike in dominions five the crossbows are actually starting to cause some serious problems if we threw something else in there like lighten them on fire or even better poison if you face an enemy that doesn't have any poison resistance it seems like you'd be able to wound them for at least one point of damage and then just start deleting them so we're going to keep going and test some of this out Right, and now here's where we're testing out Satis, the goofy idea I was talking about with their poison slingers, just throwing clouds everywhere. All we have is buffing the protection of the knights. We have a front line of these weak 10 gold heavy infantry, 16 protection but no damage. We have tons of these poison slingers throwing poison all over the place. I'm buffing their range on their poison slings so they'll actually be effective and hit people. And then I'm buffing their precision and, but I mean there's no real way to buff the damage on this darn thing. It's throwing a cloud. What we're going to do is we're going to chuck a ton of poison 
him against these beefed up knights with the same bless, same everything. And we're going to see if this is as effective because I'm starting to lose faith in the fact that knights are the best troops or at least heavily armored troops win all. So we're going to see how this goes. And keep in mind, this is 28,630 gold for Marignan's knights and only 12,996 gold for Satis. So we have a lot of room to bring way more mages, way more troops, anything. So let's see if these knights are still efficient. Oh, see that poison damage just ticking away. Look at that. These constant clouds. And a lot of them are not stacking, so we could probably do this with the like, same amount or less of the slingers. Wow, what a quick route. Slaughtered. They only killed 52, and the slingers killed 392 of them effectively. This is starting to not look good for the high protection knights, right? Alright, we're going to check it out on the next one and add another little battle to it and see what we can draw conclusion-wise from this. Here we are testing short bows with the Kalem Blizzard Warriors, and what we've given them for a buff is the vitriolic weapons, as I wanted to see if vitriolic weapons would actually help. We've got morale, precision, missile range, vitriol weapons. I wanted to see if this would actually help against heavily armored troops. We shall see. I don't think so, but we'll see. Ordinarily, even with a strength buff, your damage is still too low to be hitting people with 30 protection. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Well, now we're starting to drop spells. That's no good. That's going to mess up the test. So let's check. Knights that are dead. What do you get from? Falls off his mount. Melee freeze from a frost bow. Acid weapon effect. 7 plus 6 versus 13 plus 9. Yeah, even their protection is still just resisting it. And if I'm not incorrect, all that damaged armor does is reduces your protection by 4. Yeah, this guy's been hit a lot. And then flame eruption to kill him. Yep, that's not. That doesn't factor in. Magic resistral. Penetration. Yeah. Yep, so these guys were essentially extremely ineffective with vitriol weapons. So don't take vitriol weapons if you need to punch through armor. I think it's possibly one of the worst blesses just because of that. I've tested it out pretty extensively, and vitriol weapons are such low damage, and it's on hit, which is pretty good for a damage effect. It's not on damage, but the on hit has to punch through high... The people you'd want it to work on are high protection true, and the lowest it'll drop their armor seems to be four. It might be lower if they get hit multiple times, but I haven't seen it more than four. And then you have to, in order to do that damage to the armor, you have to punch through that protection that's initially high to begin with. So it's one of those things where it just doesn't seem worth the points at all. Now that we've started casting spells, we'll drop out of this test and see, obviously, slaughtered. And the majority of the deaths here deal were from the spells, because until the spells started coming out of the guys who I can't control what they do late, 313 killed by debug since I, once they start going off. Obviously, vitriol weapons does not work. Let's set up another test. Let's test if they use thunder weapons. Alright, here we are testing thunder weapons on our Caleb archers. Granted, we can't really get to a large amount of them as quickly as we'd like to, and Caleb does this annoying thing with the Fabashi where their extra part comes out and becomes a communion slave and does weird things. So we can't eliminate all variables here, but we have some knights, we have some archers. We'll see at least how it goes, see if there's any indication that it'll be good, and if not, we'll try something else. Let's see what happens. Got our blessing on with our reinvigoration. On this side, we've got our blessing on, which is shock weapons, precision, and missile range. We decided not to go with strength on this one to test it out on its own, just to isolate the shock weapons. Now, army of gold will give us fire resistance, so we don't really have that affecting anything. I believe we cast Ground Army to neutralize the shock vulnerability because I didn't want that to factor into it. So I believe we have a neutral shock resistance now in protection of 30. Let's see. Well, that's unfortunate. That made our precision way worse. That may alter the test quite a bit. Oh yeah, that's going to alter the test a lot. Let's 
chance test before they run into each other. How many knights have been killed at this point, or at least injured? Range attack crossbow, zero points of shock damage, one versus zero in a dice roll, so it's still just up in the air. Virtually pure luck. Remember, our ice clad don't have a really good chance of injuring these guys at all. We're not testing them. Blizzard Warrior, freeze with a melee attack. Counts as melee, that's interesting. Hold fatigue. Not looking good for our archers here, is it? Main advantage of the shock weapons is the stun that comes with the shock. Range attack crossbow for three points of fatigue damage. Shock weapons effect. One plus six versus zero plus nine. Four plus seven versus zero plus eight. Shock weapons, the other reason I never really recommend them is because a lot of times that's the kind of weapon that will make a player feel like they got cheated and give them a decent argument for it. And that's not a healthy way to look at the game because the random dice generator goes both ways all the time. It's not cheating you, it's just randomization. The best they can provide it. When you see numbers like one versus zero, it makes it very difficult to convince yourself that you didn't get slighted when you're consistently rolling sixes and they're rolling nines and you're rolling sevens and they're rolling eights. It makes you feel really bad. That being said, as long as you can look past that, it's a pretty decent one as long as you enjoy stunning your opponents. Really good against high defense troops. What is going on? Okay, so it didn't look very good. Doesn't look like they're doing a very good job. We had a screwy test over here. Let's run this. Yeah, that didn't go well. Let's run this test again and see if we can't fix that. All right, we did a few tricks. We added an archer to each of the lines of the flyers. <laughs> maybe that one non-flying archer will stop them from flying and maybe make them march forward, which would be a little more effective and standardized of a test. And then we'll see how this goes. No idea, but we'll see. Nope, did not work. And we summoned air elementals because we can't prevent these guys. We cannot, unfortunately, we cannot prevent these Ravashi from casting whatever the heck they want, which is a problem because they're casting air elementals, it seems like, but these guys are. Cast air elemental. Who's the traitor? There he is. Traitor. Why would you cast living clouds in the middle of the battle when I've scripted you to just do true shot? What? I guess no troops were able to be true shot, but then why did you cast it afterwards? Oh, these tests are so hard to run. Still doesn't look good for our archers. Doesn't look like they're doing very well. Let's see how they did so far. Good. Wipe those elementals out. You know, that's a cheesy way to ruin the test. Yeah, none of the knights look like they're dead. Let's see what killed you. Iceclad. Alright, killed you. Air elemental. Killed you. Kravashi with a spell. Yeah, it looks like the thunder weapons are not doing it for Kalem. Caleb Archers. So this confirms what we saw in the other test. I'm not sure which order I'm putting these tests in the video in, but it looks like unless your troops, unless your archers have an actual armor-piercing crossbow, you're not going to be able to punch through 30 protection, just like back in Dominions 5. So they have successfully achieved a point, I feel, with their changes that now crossbows are necessary against heavy troops, but also very, very effective. And regular bows are probably a little more effective against unarmored troops. Actually, quite a bit more effective against unarmored troops troops and cheaper to amass. However, it seems like they have achieved their accomplished goal. I see on the forums a lot of people talking about crossbows are still useless. I've seen ranged weapons are more of a side thing than anything, never a focus. But as we've shown with a couple of our crossbow tests, if you have a large amount of crossbows, or at least a tactically large amount, you know, you'd scale it down for smaller armies, obviously. It seems like they can really annihilate people if they're set up in the right situation with the right buffs. And that's the thing is if you test buffed archers versus buffed protections, they seem to do just fine. We'll see if we can't crank out anything else if I can't come up with anything else it seems like crossbows are very 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 effective against these super buff knights I mean you can't expect a 30 31 30 protection on every troop you face especially chaff and things like that and yet your crossbows you can get a ton of crossbows these are obviously short bow guys but I'm using them as my example because I'm stuck in this silly Caleb battle so as long as everybody agrees on two things, one, Kalem is a terrible nation and nobody should ever play them, <coughs> sarcasm, and the other is crossbows are actually really, really effective, even against the most heavily armored troops you could expect to face. And this, is, you're not going to face a thousand of these in one army, wouldn't even be practical to get that many. So you, you have a pretty good shot at taking out the heaviest troops there are with just crossbows now. Try it out, guys.
All right, here we go, the test we've all been waiting for. The super buffed Shock Mooch Dart Throwers against 30 Protection Knights. This is, I did a Strength Bless on them. I did Precision Bless, and I figured Strength would jack up the range. I figured Strength would jack up the damage. The problem with Poison Darts is there's only four ammunition, so these guys fire four times before they run into combat with their spear. Not a great test, obviously not too serious of a test, but I don't think it'll go well for the Dart Throwers. We'll see what happens. They're actually doing a decent chunk, but now they're out of darts. There we go, they're out of darts. And they haven't really killed anything yet. So many darts, and they haven't really killed anything yet. Armor defeating hit, so that reduced protection by five, and they still don't have a super big advantage. Yeah, see, that's the issue, is the dart damage is 26 versus 26 protection, because the dart is considered piercing for 15% reduction, but it's not an armor piercing dart, so it doesn't also have the 50% reduction on top of it. So it seems like once you get up to the 30 protection range, archers are fairly ineffective if they don't have armor piercing weapons like a crossbow which is nice because in dominions 5 there was a point where archery was fairly useless no matter what you had you could have all sorts of crossbows and short bows and it didn't really matter now in dominion 6 it seems like if you have armor piercing crossbows and mass you can actually punch through quite a bit of this i don't think this worked out very well for the dart warriors and they're done throwing now and they haven't really killed anything so let's get out of here and check all right and here's the end of battle recap this does not look good they only killed 61 and that's after they ran into battle with their 10 strength buff, this will go up to 26, so they actually were doing quite a bit of damage with their piercing spears, and so eh, really not good. Poisonous skin also probably killed a lot of them. Not a great idea to take somebody who doesn't have armor piercing arrows and not a lot of ammunition and load them up with a huge bless, but had to try it. You know we had to for the memes. Nothing to see here. Yeah. <laughs> 